Let's go. Okay. Hi, guys. My name is Mindy, and I, and I just said that I am the dyer and the creative mind behind Chrysalis Yarn Company. And I want to start off by saying, first of all, I'm sorry that I picked such a crazy name. <laughs> My, I didn't realize it was it was maybe a a weird name and a difficult one to say until. Three months into having this business, I was still hearing my dad say chrysalis and struggling and catching himself. So a chrysalis is part of the uh, pupation stage of usually of a moth, but sometimes of a butterfly. Butterflies are, are typically cocoons, um, but it is, it is part of that process. And some moths also are cocoons. Um, it is, it's like this crystallization, that last stage before they break open and become a butterfly. And it is, the definition of a chrysalis is this quiescent transitional stage. So it's full of possibility. And it is, it is the thing in waiting to become something. And I, I just, I thought it was the most beautiful metaphor for yarn. So you have this beautiful yarn that you're buying and you get to make it into whatever it is. It is in this still quiescent state of transition when it comes to you. And then you make it into that beautiful project. That is beautiful and very deep. Very deep, Mindy. All right, int introduce yourself again because I wasn't recording the first time. Tell us who you are, where are you from, and... Okay. My name is Mindy, and I am the dyer and creative mind behind Chrysalis Yarn Company. Do I have to go through the whole Chrysalis? No, you don't. Okay. <laughs> and I'm from Dallas. Well, I mean, I was, I live in Dallas. Um, I was born in Texas, in Austin, and then I, uh, when I was five weeks old, I moved to Zambia. So I spent most of my childhood in Africa and in Asia, um, but I came back here for college and I wanted to sort of discover my roots. I was, I grew up knowing I was Texan, my mother's Texan, my mother's family's Texan, and I wanted to discover that and really identify with being Texan. I'm, I'm eighth generation Texan. So, and then my son is ninth generation, it's crazy. <laughs> so uh, that's why that's part of why I'm very uh, connected to Texas culture, why I have a permanent Texas collection and try to bring a lot of that inspiration and influence into the colorways that I design. Very nice. Yeah, I love being Texan. Um, <laughs> I need to, I need to make a Fort Worth colorway. I haven't yet. Longhorn, um, I was going to do stockyards, Fort Worth stockyards, but then I thought Longhorn was a little more accessible to people who aren't in te Texas. Yeah. So, I found out that there's a, there's a cow town, Canada. What? Yeah. No. No, no, we need a petition to make them change their name. <laughs> there was a, either a designer or a dyer called Cowtown Knits. I think it was a designer called Cowtown Knits. And I emailed her and I was like, that's so wonderful that you're from Fort Worth. And she's like, I'm not, what, where? What? <laughs> Fort Worth, what? No, it was somewhere in Canada. So yeah, go with your gut. Go, <laughs> whatever works for you. So this is the, um, this is the Longhorn colorway all knit up in the hat Dana pattern. And uh, I just, I love the way it pools and it kind of reminds me of the patterning of a Longhorn. It's and beautiful. it took forever to get the browns just right. But I love it. This is in um, worsted. Uh, ha, so let's talk about that. I have a lot of bases. I have like a crazy amount of bases. I love yarn. Um, so I guess let's let's talk about how I got started. Let's talk about it. Yeah, I um, I never imagined that I would dye yarn. It was not on my my list. I've been knitting since I was sixteen. Um, I actually taught myself to knit from a book 
that I found in the library at my high school in Thailand. And of course, Thailand, you think knitting, right? <laughs> it's like 100 degrees and humid all year long. Um, I will say when it gets to 80, everyone's wearing parkas. They are in, in proper down coats. Um, Teenagers yeah. here do that. My children insist on wearing hoodies and sweatshirts when it's 95 degrees. I don't know why. Oh my gosh, my first year here for college, um, at about this time uh, of year, mm -hmm. so like around October, it got to maybe 70 and I was freezing because I'd just come from Thailand and we didn't have, and it was so dry. I wasn't used to it. But so anyway, I learned to knit and I was knitting mostly blankets because what else are you going to knit in Thailand? Um, and I knit constantly since then. I really loved it. I identified with it. Uh, here though, I would get attached to yarn shops in, in Texas and then they would go away. My, my local for a while was Wooly U. And after a few years, no more Wooly U. And then no more, um, what was it? Shabby Sheep. And then no more, uh, Oh, I don't know. There's There's been like seven that have gone yeah. the way of the dodo. Um, but I was very attached to Holly's when I moved to Dallas proper. And then I got the news that Holly's was closing and I was devastated. But I had, I had realized that for the last two or three years, I wasn't able to find the yarn that I liked in, in a fiber that I enjoyed in colorways that I wanted to knit and in quantities of that colorway. So when I found out that Holly's was closing, I decided, you know what? Why don't I learn to dye myself? That was last year around this time. Um, and it was especially after, actually you were, you were part of that influence. You really were. So this time almost to the day, 15 September last year, I was at West Seventh Pool, I was picking out colors with you for a Soldatna crop, Yay. inspired by Allie Ford of Explorer Knits. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and I knit that thing in four days. I was so excited. And then I had to come back and buy more yarn <laughs> um, for a, a Novelli tea uh, out of uh, Moon Tower Dye Works yarn mm -hmm. that she made specifically for the crawl, which was inspired by the Monet's. Yeah. that were um, on exhibit. So I was just hooked to indie dye yarn at that point. And I thought I'd make my own. So here we're we are. so glad you did. Tell but us about that, tell us about your yarn. That's also why I have a lot of fibers. <laughs> okay. And, and bases because I I do I love fiber and I always have. Mm -hmm. And um and I know so much about these different fibers. So when I was able to find these undyed yarn bases in so many blends, I just had to have them all. <laughs> had to have them all. This is my favorite though, I'll be honest, because I'm really attached to wool. And this is, this is the Ginkgo Fight Tea, a pattern by Emily Green. And, um, I believe it's available on Ravelry now. For a while, it was Pom Pom Quarterly's botanical issue, which I bought at your shop. <laughs> and, and so I made this in what I call my Marion Merino, and that is 100% non-superwash wool. And I'm very, I'm very attached to non-superwash. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, customers really like superwash, so I have had to buy some bases that are super washed that have nylon because that seems to be what's most popular. Um, but this, oh gosh, I wish I, I wish you guys could touch it. I'm actually thinking about making teeny weeny minis and including um, in purchases um, for like probably the month of November, every purchase uh, will have teeny weeny minis of other bases that are undyed to make it easier for me but then you get to feel the fiber because we're still in a pandemic. You can't come to a shop to, to feel my different fibers and to see how soft they are and maybe try something that's not 
superwash nylon blend. Uh, the thing about 100% non superwash wool is it's going to last you for like 20, 30 years. It is not, there's no plastics in it. It is completely um, environmentally friendly and, uh, and just beautiful in that fulling and the, the softness. And the more you wear it, the softer it's gonna be like wool. I love it, I'm really attached. <laughs> it's beautiful. And that was, um, that was the first top that I made out of this yarn. But I, let's, let's see. I, so my bases, I have Marion Merino, which is a fingering weight and it's a two ply, 100% um, non-superwash. But in fingering, I also have Atkins sock. And all of my bases, which I'm probably gonna rename because like I said, I got a little too cerebral <laughs> in, in building my business. So like chrysalis yarns, oh, how does that, how do you pronounce that? Atkinsock. Oh, I have to memorize. This is going to school. I have to memorize all these things. So I'm going to rename my bases. So they're really user friendly and intuitive. So it'll be like classic sock will be Atkins. But at the moment, they're named after these influential women in conservation, in botany, in um, ornithology, in entomology, these subjects of science that for them, they were breakthrough. I mean, uh, Anna Atkins was the first woman to, um, to create a photographic process. She created cyanotype printing. Okay. And she then made this entire beautiful art book. Um, but it's credited to a guy, Sir Herschel. Anyway, and Marion um, is Mar uh, Maria Sibylla Marion, who was one of the earliest. Um, uh, botany um, artists, eh, that's not the right word, illustrator. So um, in the 16th century, she would illustrate and study plants and in a way that people hadn't done before and we still use her art in science today. I don't know, so, I don't, you can't see the chat right now maybe, but we all love your names. We love the names. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I need the stories I'm behind them. Them. It's been it's been like a rush to to learn how to do e-commerce. I had this business plan that was amazing. I was going to hit all of these shows and and sort of space it all out over this and next year. Yeah. Then the pandemic hit. The pandemic. I'm I'm pretty sure I had COVID that week that I had to cancel the show. Oh. Because so I was so sick. I remember I had to I had yeah, to cancel yeah, yeah. my schedule. I was so sick. I thought I was going to die, and I have never been that sick. Oh no! Now they're saying if you were sick in February, it was it probably been COVID. that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I I was honestly I wrote my will. I was that sick. Mindy. <laughs> so was my dad, and um, yeah, it was bad. But I mean, I recovered, and we did our show. Um, but now, like, I have all of these shows, um, Vogue Knit Live in, in three cities. Um, I, I remember, I remember you were booked at all of these big shows. Yeah, yeah, and I'm still booked for, uh, for Stitches West, and I don't know what, what's gonna happen there. Um, probably gonna get canceled, but they're just, they'll roll over to the next show. Okay. However, my business model and my business plan had to change rapidly. So I'm still learning how to code, how to build a website. And I need to do this. I have had this plan for a while of really telling the story of every base and every woman and having her picture and her art. And, um, and so that you can kind of, you can learn a little bit about these breakthrough feminists in science that you don't learn about in school because yeah. it's, it's so whitewashed and male. Yeah. Anyway, not, not that I am like, hmm. <laughs> sorry, not that that's triggering for me, <laughs> but okay. So there's Marion Marino, um, and then there's Atkins sock. And let me pull something that has Atkins sock here. Oh yeah. Ha -ha. This is held together with Comstock kids silk. And a Comstock is another, um, 16th century artist, um, illustrator, and uh, that's beautiful. And botanist. 
And so this is held with an Atkins um, and it's in the colorway Lupine mm -hmm. with, which has been one of my most popular colorways, Lupine and Cyanotype, which I'm so proud of because they are inspired by, um, by the things I'm inspired by. So, um, and then this is held with Tanzanite in um, Comstock Kid Silk. And this is the No Frills sweater by Petite Knits. And it is my new favorite and I cannot wait to wear it all winter long. Uh, the silk content of the, um, the Kid Silk and the nylon content of that sock weight is going to make it where this will be more durable um, for people with kids, I'll say, because <laughs> this, this is going to have um, that, that strength of silk where you won't be able to rip a hole into it quite as easily. People with kids and or dogs? And or dogs, we're cats. Okay. <laughs> we're birds. Well, no, a bird could go through this pretty quickly. Let's, let's be honest. So um, at Anna Atkins sock is 75% superwash merino wool and 25% nylon. So it has a high nylon content. It's great for socks. It's got excellent yardage at um, 463 yards per 100 grams. It is, that is great. Then I have Rachel Carson. Rachel Carson was one of the first women to win the Presidential Medal of Honor for her work in, in conservation in the 1950s. She, um, she exposed pollution, mass pollution in, um, in companies and their dumping. And she was a journalist who, oh, wow, she's just, she's fantastic. So I wanted to save something really special for her and I have named the Carson Pure Silk, Beautiful. which is a light fingering, a three ply, and it is 100% silk. It's the softest thing in the entire universe and shiny and strong. It's got that strength of, of silk and... Uh, but I will say, if you're going to use silk, here is a tip. Pull from the outside. Got it. And maybe don't wind it on a ball winder because it's so slippery and slick. It will, this has happened to me twice, it will shoot across the room. It'll come off the ball winder and just go. So uh, if you're going to use a ball winder, go really, really slow and gentle. And then pull from the outside so that you, the fibers stay nice and shiny and they don't have that same um, fuzzing that you can get with silk if it's worked too much. We've had that experience too. If you, and sometimes if you do pull from the inside of the ball, it, and, and the ball collapses in on itself because- and it'll, and it'll make these horrible knots yeah. that you have to just untangle. Good. Silk is, it's worth it. But it is more delicate to to work with, right. and this is knit up in the ranunculus with uh, the sleeveless version, mm -hmm. and um, the ranunculus sweater by uh, Knit Midori Cafe, and um, this is a rebel colorway though. I wanted to repeat it, but I didn't take notes. <laughs> so you call it, you call your one of a kinds rebels. That's oh, right. yes, yes. So my one of a kinds or my oopsies okay. are rebels without a colorway is how, how I call it. And they're always 10% off. Sometimes I'll do a sale where they're down to 50 just to clear it all out. Um, I had a lot of rebels getting started. <laughs> Less so now. I've, I've streamlined my system, got myself a, a, a brand new iPad Pro with the new iPad Pencil. Period. So that I can quickly make notes while I'm dying without, it was a, it was a whole thing, like getting all that water on your notepad and having the notes. Um, you got to learn your own system when you're a dyer. <laughs> and it happens when you're doing some colorways that <laughs> are variegated and speckled, this stuff happens fast. And, and then if you're not taking notes, 
So this was a beautiful colorway that's variegated and I didn't take the right notes. So I'm still working on it. But it's, I'm calling it um, Wisteria and, and with okay. any luck, we'll get something similar. Yeah, it's beautiful. I've had a lot of questions for that colorway. That's why I have to mention because it is, it's beautiful. Um, this is, I really love working in the Marion Merino. So I have tons of samples in it and I really, I was hoping shows would come back and people would touch it and love it. It's also my cheapest yarn because it's not super washed because it's fully Merino. It has no other expensive fibers. It is really economical yeah. and still beautiful and nobody buys it. So I'm really trying to talk it up. But this is the um, Blue Bonnet Fields Forever shawl pattern by Chris Browning, who is a local designer and she has a new pattern and she made one of the samples out of my yarn, which I've added to the shop for the crawl in case you want to make it just like hers. The one that she used in her sample uses these two colors in Townsend DK. This is the um, Sunset Over Northwood, which is a lot prettier how she did it, but I did it in the socks. And then the cyanotype for the contrast color. Hers is the main color cyanotype with Sunset Over Northwood as the um, contrast. But, um, but I'm going through samples and I'm not, I'm not going through systematically. I also have in fingering patch sock named after Edith Patch, who was the first U.S. forest ranger. U oh, sorry, first female U.S. forest ranger. And this is, actually it's Patch, uh, Patch Sock and Marion Marino. But, um, so the main color for this Soldat, no, sorry, Stone Crop Cardi um, by Andrea Mowry is the um, rainbow fluorite colorway. And most of my colorways are inspired by science, by like geology, ornithology, entomology, which is fancy words for saying rocks, uh, birds, and bugs. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so rainbow fluorite is, um, it's a semi-precious stone. And then the main color, or the, sorry, the contrast color here, which has a low contrast, and I like the way that it knit up, um, is chrysalis, one of my main uh, core co colors. And it's sort of a minty aqua. Um, and that is reminiscent of the, the monarch butterfly chrysalis. Beautiful. I, I, Carissa, I think Carissa is on here. Chris, I'm not, I can't. Oh, I see you. Hi. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Where is your, is your Blue Bonnet Hills shawl on Ravelry, Carissa? I don't see. Uh, it's it. Blue Bonnet Fields, Fields Forever. forever. Yeah. And okay. Yes, it is on Ravelry. Huh? And I'd made kits. Um, oh, excellent. And uh, I spelled Blue Bonnet wrong. Please forgive me in the chat. <laughs> I can't spell. <laughs> So when, when everything went down with COVID, I created kits of this and of her uh, Wonder Woman shawl so that people could buy them. And I messed up. I messed up. And I'm still so mad at myself because on my site, it said 10% of proceeds go to um, DFW Fiberfest, but it was 100%. It was supposed to be 100%. So I sold almost all of them and 100% of proceeds went to, donated to DFW uh, Fiberfest. Um, no, no, 100% sales. So, so I didn't like. I made no money, and that never was a problem for me. That's I awesome. really, and I would love to do that. Bring it back in the Marion Marino, buy the Marion Marino, <laughs> and uh, in more kits. And I'm in, I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to make kits right now. I've just listed the yarn, but the Descent Cow will be the same thing. Where 100% of the sale, if you buy that kit in that yarn, it goes to DFW Fiberfest. I need awesome. DFW Fiberfest to come back. I love it. I have that sample here too. Ah! <laughs> it's so pretty. Thank you. I think so too. Oh I my gosh. And it's, it's inspired by Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yes. So that's like super on brand. She's amazing. I gotta look ah! it up. Tilt my iPad up so you can see it. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Your yarn was so fabulous to work with. Oh, thank you. 
so squishy. She, and that is um, the so, moving into decays. I have towns in decay, which is um, Mary Townsend. Oh, I'm blanking. Oh, <laughs> I should know that. I haven't had enough coffee though. <laughs> so, towns in decay um, is the Atkins sock equivalent of decay. So, this is 75% superwash wool and 25% nylon which means you can use it for socks you can use it for shirts you can use it for anything I've made t-shirts in this because again I have a kid <laughs> and I love to wear my knits but I would never ever ever bring this out of the closet if he's home he's a toddler and he's a boy um so no silks but <laughs> So this is like, this is perfect. And I've made this, um, I've used this yarn to make him the cutest little sweater in the world. Yeah. That is really oh. cute. When he was, when I was pregnant, um, prior to learning to dye and all of that, I made a number of little baby sweaters with matching ones to fit my dad. So granddad and Jamie could match and it was the most precious thing in the whole world. But now he's old enough to know what he wants to wear. Ooh, that is cute. Okay, so before we go on too much further, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> it is, it's 1030 and I'm not gonna stop you, we can go on. Okay. But I did for the people who maybe have plans or wanna do something else. Um, okay. your, your yarns are on your website, which is chrysalis yarns with an S. Yes. Dot com. Yes. And I've put that in the chat <laughs> right under where I put Carissa Browning's name. <laughs> Chrysalisyarns.com. And there, I want to say there's pictures of your dad on there. Yes. Yes. My dad and my kid. I, I put a slideshow up and uh, to tell a bit of the story with, uh, with pictures of us wearing knits. So. Perfect. And yeah. if you're, if you're here, uh, for the yarn crawl and you need a code for this um, to put on your passport the code for this podcast oh. is um, CYC912 so if you um, if you're yarn crawling virtually and you need something to put on your passport you can just write CYC912 and then also when you if you make a purchase there you go if you make a purchase <clears throat> We have passport stamps. That's right. We She'll have stamp. pins. Perfect. And also chrysalis yarn pins. So, so got you all set up. If you make a purchase this weekend, you get a pin and a pants pa passport stamp. Right. And you find um, Mindy's yarn on chrysalisyarns.com. All right. Continue on. Okay, yeah, because I have so many bases. Okay. I will also say though that um, in my my list, my yarn bases website uh, or my yarn bases page on the website, I have not yet added Fossey, DK, and Sock to that description. However, every listing, product listing with Fossey, DK, or Fossey Sock does have all of the information on it that you would need. Okay. So, uh, and that is that's my. Uh, Second most luxury brand or um, base, Carson silk being the most expensive because it is pure silk and it is the most luxury. Um, Bossy is the second tier um, below it's the tier below that, which is seventy percent alpaca, baby alpaca, twenty percent silk, and ten percent cashmere. So it's completely um, non superwash. It is environmentally friendly. It is fluffy. It is soft. It is amazing. And it's in DK as well. So you have more options. So Fossy DK is amazing. I don't have a sample knit up in it yet because it's very new for me. But it's named after Diane Fossey, who is really, really inspirational for me. Um, she, she was working with gorillas in a lot of the same countries where I lived and grew up. Um, and I need, I need a good all color. I need, I need like, let's, let's get another base so that I can call it good all. I have actually met Jane Goodall. Very cool. No memory of it. I was the baby, but <laughs> you can say you did, but she came to one of our parties. Um, so my parents were diplomats and they would throw these really lavish parties, 
um, in the places where we lived, and we lived in Tanzania. And her her then husband was uh, also working in Tanzania. So uh, so she came to one of our parties, and my parents got to schmooze with her. She's amazing, absolutely incredible, wonderful woman, and and really funny. Um, and she thought I was cute. So <laughs> she thought I was cute as a baby. She may not think so now. <laughs> anyway, but yes, Diane Fossey was um, in the same work, different species, doing the same kind of things. Unfortunately, she was murdered by poachers around the time I was born. Gosh. Yeah, that was, that's harsh. It was a loss to the scientific communi community for sure. Um, and then Hodges, Clara, Clara Hodges DK, which is my 50, 50. And this is, that's what this is made out of. This is Hodges DK. I also have a Hodges sock. It, um, Clara Hodges was the first woman, um, national park ranger. And, and she was a full on badass. She was incredible. She could do anything, um, by herself. And she, she lived by herself on, in Yosemite National Park and, um, built the cabin she lives in. I mean, she was just incredible. So Clara Hodges DK, which is 50% silk, 50% superwash merino. So it has all of that um, beautiful shine and strength and takes color gorgeously. I have another sample in Hodges DK that people love, which is, this is, oh, sorry, my dad's texting me. <laughs> and that was loud, sorry guys. This is the um, Fleur shawl. Yes, that's beautiful. And it is in a Texas colorway. So this is Sixth Street, which when I was thinking about Austin, I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I going to use for Austin, right? And then I thought Sixth Street, that's an easy one. It's very colorful, the, the bright neon lights, loud music. So that was what sort of inspired this colorway. And then the contrast color is called um, Purple Pride. And I actually have skeins of this in um, what I call Murray Surrey. So I like the rhyme and um, uh, Mary, Maria, Marie, again, blanking my brain. Anyway, um, the Murrays will say she and her husband were influential in building the Alaskan Wildlife Refuge and Denali National Park. So conservationists who are incredible and I loved the rhyme, so had to do it. Um, I, so I have Comstock Kid Silk, which is a lace weight, and it's great to hold together and to bring tensile strength to your project from the silk and from that mohair fiber. Um, also, I have the Surrey Silk, which is um, another great option, but if, if you find that you're allergic to mohair, which I've seen a lot from my customers, that's why um, baby alpaca surrey with silk is an alternative, and it's not quite as irritating to the skin. It is fluffier, so it's going, if you're holding it together, you're going to have a bigger gauge. Um, but beautiful. And this is the Purple Pride. Um, there are skeins in the shop of that. The Purple Pride colorway is also the um, color number four that I used for this Soldatna. And the colors here are Emerald, which is that nice green. Sarah Bernhardt, who was an artist in France, and she's amazing. I, um, I really have to take a minute to talk to her, talk about her. But there's, there's a peony named Sarah Bernhardt. So that's the, the spe there are the, um, the variety of peony, which has this beautiful, um, bright baby pink color. But Sarah Bernhardt was a, an artist in the turn of the 20th century. And she, she was incredible. Her, well, she modeled for a lot of different artists, but she was a dancer. 
and she's absolutely beautiful. There's still some films of her dancing. Um, and there's actually cafes themed Sarah Bernhardt in Paris. There was one time we went to, we went to this cafe. We stopped there. I didn't know anything about Sarah Bernhardt at the time, but my hair was, uh, was cropped about like, like this and it was super curly when it's shorter. And, um, I was sitting at the table. People kept walking by going, they thought I was Sarah Bernhardt. <laughs> Cause apparently I looked so much like her when I was skinnier. And then there was this picture of her on the table we were sitting at and it just dawned on me. So I've had, I've had a bit of, of a connection. So that was one of my very first colorways. I had to do it. Um, Emerald, Sarah Bernhardt, purple pride and chrysalis so those are all core colorways that are always um available in some quantity on some base um, purple pride is the variety color of a, a tulip so also botany themed um let's see dk's i think i've covered it i have dorman dk singles and um uh, I'm going to drop that base though. I don't like it. I'll probably run a sale next month of like a clearance, dye it all up, clearance sale. Cause I just, I hate single ply and it's driving me crazy. It's the only single ply I have and I'm going to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the qualities about it that you don't enjoy? about Single, single ply? Yeah. I'm always splitting the fibers when I knit it. Yeah. And also to dye singles, um, it doesn't have that twist and tensile strength that you have with applied yarn. Mm -hmm. So it starts to come apart and you have to be really careful with it, especially the Dorman uh, DK single ply that I have is a baby alpaca blend. Mm -hmm. So that alpaca, it's just, it, it doesn't hold together the way that wool does or the way that silk does. So it's just always coming off of my, I don't, I don't enjoy it. It's, it's fine to knit with, mm -hmm. it's just tricky to dye with and I don't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And the good, um, the good properties of it is it's super, super soft, right? It is, it is super soft. It knits wonderfully. It has this beautiful drape. This is knit in Dorman DK mm -hmm. and it, it's light and fluffy mm -hmm. and, and, beautiful and it has a bit of a halo. So it feels like a cloud around your neck, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, this is, this is a top actually designed by another local um, designer, um, Ann Iverson. And this is the uh, seafoam sleeveless top. And uh, she designed it in the Dorman DK. It is, it's, it's like a cloud. So there, there is Dorman DK available in the shop right now. Um, and like I said, I'll probably run a sale soon this before the end of the year to clear it out. Again, I don't like tying it. <laughs> I want to stick with things I love to dye. Um, Bailey DK is the equivalent of patch socks. So this is the MCN and Merino cashmere, Merino cashmere nylon blend, mm -hmm. which again, incredibly soft fluffy wonderful the um i made the so basic sweater by max um max the knitter for my dad in patch sock in cyanotype rebels like they did not pass the quality control test so they get to be personal knits and uh, and he loves it he has worn it every day this week because it's been cool enough and it's just, it's light. He's like, I don't sweat in this. Why don't I sweat in this? It's, it's so light and wonderful. And I'm like, yeah, that's wool. Yeah. <laughs> Dad, you wear sweatshirts made of cotton. So it's going to retain moisture where wool takes the sweat and moves it away. And so you're always comfortable, but breathable. Um, this is the uh, Ripple, no, do you? Framework Bralette. Oh, cute. And by Jesse Made Designs. And um, this is the So Delight colorway, uh, another one of my firsts, and I love it. And uh, let's see, DK, I think that's, I think that covers it. I don't have a sample in Bossy, 
like I said, it's brand new. Um, I have two worsted weights, a superwash and a non-superwash. So the Marion Merino equivalent of worsted is Fountain. And then cold and worsted has that super wash. It's beautifully, uh, beautifully takes dye. This is the pumpkin spice colorway with the uh, Turkish coffee as the contrast color. And these are homespun boot socks by Pearl Soho. And it's one of, it is the first sock pattern I ever made um, like six years ago. Back when it was free and designed in Madeline Tosh. <laughs> I used to pay for it, but. And I have made so many pairs of these socks. It's incredible. I love that they're worsted weight. I love that they are thick and, and bouncy and wonderful and just perfect for going to bed. Or, you know, boot socks. Um, I have a bulky weight that I'm bringing for hat kits for the winter as well. Um, and they'll just, they'll be, basically they'll all be rebels. So any leftover dye stock that I don't want to put down the drain, I don't want to waste, um, it is a chemical. It's, dyeing yarn is safe. They are, um, these are chemicals that you use every day and the chemical process is, um, it is water treatable, water soluble. However, if you've got iron pipes like I do, it can be corrosive. So putting it down the drain isn't a good, good idea. It's also not the right pH for giving to plants. It's not that any of these dyes are toxic, but you don't, you don't want to, um, they are acidic, highly acidic. And, um, and so it's corrosive, it's bad for plants in that way. Plants, like putting it into the grass, you're gonna get a patch of dead grass because it's just, you're ruining the pH level of that soil. Not that it won't come back, because again, it's not toxic, but it's just better to use that leftover dye for something original, something one of a kind. And then, mm-hmm. So that's why I got all this bulky weight and then I'm going to dye it in like two skein batches and make hats with handmade little fluffy palms because I've got all of this. I, I make handmade teddy bears. Cute. <laughs> I love it. I, I've been hand sewing teddy bears for a long time. Um, I, like I love artist teddy bears and I collect them. And uh, um, so if you're interested in collectible handmade teddy bears. Some of the best handmade um, teddy bear brands are Steiff, S-T-E-I-F-F, -F, and, um, and Charlie Bears, which Charlie Bears you can find easily in the U.S. And there's actually a shop, a teddy bear shop in Fredericksburg, Texas, that cool. has Charlie Bears, and they're gorgeous. Mine aren't. <laughs> they're very beginner. So, but, so I have a lot of this faux fur fabric and I'm going to make palms that coordinate with these hat kits so that you can knit up a quick Christmas gift. All right. I think that covers it. I think that covers the bases and literally like, like a, you know, That's the bases of, uh, uh, metaphorically like baseball, but also the bases. That's perfect. I have, I have to say, I think, I think I speak for everyone. Um, it has been a pleasure to get to know you oh, and thanks. to learn about your yarn and, and learn about the ideas and the strong women behind all of your names. Don't change your base names. Okay. okay. Well, I okay. mean, it's your company. You do what you want, but. <laughs> I think what I'm going to end up doing um, instead, though, is maybe like like what I've done with Hodges and, um, and Fossey, where if I bring in a base that has the same fiber content for DK and sock, give it the same name. It doesn't have to be Townsend. It can just be Atkins sock, Atkins DK. Yes. Does anybody else have any questions? Um, anything you want to type into the chat for Mindy? I can't, uh, for whatever reason, I can't see the chat, but. Oh, 
it's pretty much we all love your your names. Oh, thank you. We all love the ideas and the inspiration behind them. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to be a scientist. Since, actually, I wanted to be specifically an entomologist since I was five years old. But I, unfortunately, my son has the same thing. I have dyspraxia, which means I'm dyslexic and I have, I'm, and I have what's called dyscalculia, which is um, less known, but it's dyslexia with numbers. Okay. And my son, this is, uh, he's in speech therapy. Um, hopefully he'll fare better than me. We didn't know this was a thing until I was already out of college, but it made it where I wasn't able ever to pass even pre-algebra. And that's a prerequisite if you want to be a scientist, even if the science doesn't use math. You are a scientist right now. You're a chemist. I, I am. Uh, I am going about it my own way, which Jane Goodall did. Yes. D Diane Fossey did. I mean, I'm, that's why I'm so inspired by these women. They didn't, they, they paved their way. They wanted to do it and they didn't care if they couldn't go to college because they were women, you know, so that's, yeah, well, bringing it all together. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much. This has been really fun. Thank you for having me. Yeah. It was so fun. And I'm, I'm so glad that I could share my enthusiasm and my love for fiber. We're glad to. Okay. Chrysalisyarns.com. And if you missed any part of this chat with Mindy, the owner and Dyer, um, it's going to be posted on the West Evans Wool website. So yeah, thank you so much. And thank you everybody for, um, yeah, thank you everybody for watching. It was so nice to be here and I'm glad that I got to share this with you guys. So, oh, and remember, if you make a purchase this weekend, you get passport stamp and a pin, um, a West 7th pin and a Crystal's Yarns pin for your totes. Yay, we can't see, we can't wait to see you in person. Whenever that's going to be, I think we all are going to flock to a trunk show or right. a, a show and find you there. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Thank you for having me. Yes. Thank you. Bye, Bye everybody.